So I'm very pleased to have Eva Clark with me. So could, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? In which sense? About myself now? About my story? What about do you want? yourself now? About myself now. Well, I am uh, I'm very happy to be a wife, a mother and a grandmother. I am retired. I used to work in a further education college for 20 odd years. And what I have done ever since I've retired is to speak in schools and colleges telling my mother's story of the Holocaust. How important is it for you to let people know yours and your mother's story? Well, I think it's very important mainly to try and make the history come alive because everybody can identify with one family. Nobody can identify with six million. It's meaningless. And I also think that just hearing one, one family's story, people can get a measure of what it was all about. And, and I think the history should never be forgotten. And also, I think, you know, the lessons continue to have to be taught and learned in this day and age because genocides continue and racism and prejudice continue. And we all have a duty to try to stop them. So what will you be talking about tonight? I'll be telling my mother's story of the Holocaust, about her, the three and a half years she spent in concentration camps. What do you want people to take away with them tonight? That's a difficult question. Well, I hope they, you know, they will, they'll be interested. I hope that it might, that it might encourage them to stand up for human rights. I hope that it might give people a sense of responsibility, that we all have this responsibility to stand up for what is right in the world um, and try to, you know, dissuade people from showing racism and prejudice against other people. How close were you to your mother? I was very close to my mother. Um, lots of people have said to us, you know, was it because of her, of her background, my start in life? But that's one of those chicken and egg questions you can't tell, <laughs> um, because she was very close to her mother. So um, I would have hoped that the chances were that we would have been close in any case, but probably the history made us that bit closer. Did you and your mother often talk about the events that happened to you and her? Yes, we did. Uh, mainly because my mother was always able to talk about it. A lot of survivors have not been able to talk about it or only began talking about it in later life when they became more elderly and realised, you know, they didn't have years and years stretching ahead of them. And also, I think, quite a lot of um, survivors only started speaking when their grandchildren started to ask them questions. But my mother was always able to... Um, answer my questions and apparently I used to ask her questions all the time and that was also I must say that was also mainly because I didn't have any family I didn't have any uncles and aunts and grandparents and cousins around the place so that's why I was always asking her questions about her life uh, you know growing up her school days and interspersed with those very ordinary family stories she would tell me in tiny snippets of her wartime experiences as she felt that I could cope with the details. Do you feel confident about telling people about your story? Yes, I do. I mean, it's always, it's always very emotional for me to do so because I'm talking about my family. The emotion needn't necessarily appear on the surface, but I'm, you know, I'm always churning away inside because I'm talking about my family. I'm not just telling a story.